Namaste, dear viewers. On the occasion of 125th birth anniversary of one of the tallest stalwarts of India's freedom struggle, Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose, India Student Hub presents a tribute to this fearless freedom fighter. Let us discover facets of Netaji's life through an Indian student, Harshal Zalke. I am যে আজ ভারতবর্ষের সম্মুখে একটা মস্ত বড় সুযোগ উপস্থিত হয়েছে এই সুযোগ যদি আমরা গ্রহণ করতে পারি যদি ঠিক পথে চলে কৌশল অবলম্বন করে let us take full advantage of the present international situation and achieve our goal of complete independence what inspires us about the man who was born 125 years ago what can we learn from him? What can he teach the youth of today? Who was the first soldier of India's last war for independence? Let us take a short journey down the memory lane of Netaji's exceptional qualities and contributions in helping India win her freedom from the British. He was a freedom fighter who was six feet tall, bold and courageous, a man who did not mind stepping down from power to uphold a cause and a man who did not mind stepping out of the country in order to support his fight against the colonial powers. A man who, although born in luxury and wealth, blessed with good looks and intelligence, a man who, although having cleared the imperial civil services, thought nothing of rejecting it for his higher calling a valorous hero who could easily give up personal glory for the larger good of the nation. He would not take an insult against India or Indian culture lying down from anyone, let alone from his own professor at the Presidency College. He was a patriot to the core and also had a solid understanding of the Vedas and the Upanishads. He was guided spiritually by the teachings of Ram Krishna Parahansa and Swami Vivekananda all his life, and they had a profound effect on him. His choice of studying philosophy showcases his brilliant mind, which he put to good use throughout his life. Let us hear from Nora Singhal of grade six from Brambleton Middle School on how Netaji continues to inspire the young. Hello, my name is Nora Singhal, and I'm a sixth grader at Brambleton Middle School, Loudoun County, Virginia. Today, I'm going to be talking about Subhash Chandra Bose and how he inspires me. Subhash Chandra Bose was a freedom fighter, also known as Nethaji. Nethaji in English means leader. Nethaji was born in Old Dasha on January 23rd, 1897. Nethaji graduated in 1919. In fact, he went to England and passed the Indian Civil Service exam. However, Nethaji went back to India so he could help his country. He founded Azad Hind Fodge, which in English means Free India Army, and also became the president of the Indian National Congress. He went to Japan and Germany to find help for India. One of his slogans is Jai Hind, which means long live India. Nethaji inspires me because he was selfless and he cared about others. Thank you for listening. And now, Pavan Gupta, studying human development and education from Harvard, will tell us how he found motivation and purpose by emulating the life of Subhash Chandra Bose. Namaste everyone. Happy Republic Day. I am Pavan. You must know Nethaji. Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose, a freedom fighter. He spent a lot of time outside India. He had to. He was fighting against the operation of a foreign rule. I think he sacrificed a lot and fought passionately for our country. He had a vision of free India. He was an original thinker, a fearless man. And I think we have a lot to learn from his life, especially having a vision and how to fight for it. I think we have a lot to learn from his life. I take a lot of inspiration from his life. I envision a world where children are free to learn, have equal opportunities to learn and grow and have freedom of thought. And that's why I came to Harvard to study human development and education. So on this 23rd January, I hope we all remember Netaji and try to imbibe some of his qualities. Joyji Debroy. Executive Vice President, Global Programs, Windrock International, reiterates the profound impact 
Netaji has had on many generations, especially in Bengal. For every Indian in general and Bengalis in particular, Netaji Subhash Chandra Bosch represents the spirit of the Indian national movement and uh, the struggle to overthrow more than 200 years of British rule in India. Netaji, like many other leaders of his time, um, eschewed his privileged upbringing to join the nationalist movement and demand India's independence. As we near his birth anniversary, it is important to remember that they gave up their tomorrow for our today. Um, I remember the reverence with which my father, who was a teenager during India's freedom struggle, would talk about the influence Netaji had on the youth of the day. Though Netaji ranked fourth, I believe, in the ICS exams, he resigned the very next year to be able to join the nationalist movement and fight for India's independence. Um, he was initially influenced by Gandhiji's vision of nonviolence. Increasingly, he believed that freedom is not given, it must be taken. And uh, though he was elected national, um, the president of the Indian National Congress, he resigned because of his differences. As the British government kept incarcerating him, his escape from house arrest with the assistance of his nephew Shishir Bosch became the stuff of legend. Of course, he believed the enemy of the enemy is a friend with help from the Japanese forces, the Azad Hind Fauj was constituted under his leadership in the Far East. And um, though there were some initial successes in Burma and the Northeast, um, unfortunately, the forces were defeated and support died down after the surrender of the Japanese um, in 1945. So though some of Netaji's tactics may have raised questions no one disputes his love for the country, his fierce devotion to fight for its independence, um, and his ability to rally an entire nation to the cause of freedom. Um, and of course, the ultimate price and sacrifice he paid uh, to achieve this. Um, it is important to remember it is because of the actions of leaders like Netaji that we enjoy our freedoms today that we take so much for granted. Thank you. Netaji was not merely a charismatic leader. He was also someone who helped India win her independence from the British. Let us hear how from Dr. Malabi Venkateshan, formerly Chief of Enteric Infections, Walter Reed Army Institute of Research, Silver Spring, MD, now retired. This year, 2022, marks the 125th birth anniversary of Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose, one of India's most extraordinary, influential, and courageous freedom fighter who advocated an aggressive approach to gain his country's freedom from the British. He is revered by many in India as a heroic, bold, and charismatic leader whose defiant and fierce patriotism and persistence in the face of many obstacles led to the revival of the Azad Hind Forge or the Indian National Army in Southeast Asia. Clement Attlee, the Prime Minister of England, cited Subhash Bose and the INA as one of five specific reasons for the British to ultimately leave India. With his towering personality, he was six feet tall and excellent oratory skills, Subhash Bose actively recruited men and women from all parts of Southeast Asia to fight for India's independence. The soldiers in the INA endearingly called him Netaji or respected leader. He aroused his followers with slogans like Tum Hame Khoon Do, Main Tumhe Azadi Dunga, 
which translates into you give me your blood and I will give you freedom. Subhash Chandra Bose was born on 23rd January 1897 in Katak, Orissa to a wealthy Eurocentric Bengali family. He was the ninth of 14 children of Rai Bahadur Janakinath Bose, a lawyer, and his wife Prabhavati Devi. After high school, he joined Presidency College in Kolkata, later graduating in 1918 with a BA degree in philosophy from the Scottish Church College. During these years, he was spiritually influenced by the teachings of Sri Ramakrishna Paramahansa and Swami Vivekananda. In August of 1920 at Cambridge University, he passed the first open competitive exam for the Indian Civil Service but quit before his second exam and returned to India in June 1921 to join Mahatma Gandhi's civil disobedience movement. Here, under the mentorship of Chittaranjan Das, he was elected President of All India Youth Congress in 1923, Secretary of the Bengali State Congress and editor of Forward, a newspaper founded by C.R. Das. In the late 1920s, he was amongst the first Congress leaders to call for complete independence from Britain, Purna Swaraj, rather than India becoming a British dominion. As an Indian nationalist in British India, he was incarcerated and went to prison several times. In 1927, he became General Secretary of the Congress Party, working with Nehru for the freedom struggle. In mid-1943 in Singapore, Netaji assumed the role of the president of the Indian Independence League, IIL, a political organization led by expatriate and revolutionary leader Rash Bihari Bose. In January 1943, the Japanese invited Bose to spearhead the Indian nationalist movement in East Asia. Under Bose's leadership, the INA was reactivated and expanded to include Indians of all religious and ethnic diversity from Singapore, Malay, Burma, and other places in Southeast Asia. An all-female combat unit, the Jhansi Ki Rani Regiment, was also created under the leadership of Dr. Lakshmi Sehgal. At its peak, estimates of 40 to 50,000 Indian soldiers formed the new INA, or the Azad Hind Fauj. In October 1943, Netaji Bose, with the help of the Japanese, formed the Provisional Government of Free India or Azad Hind with its army, the Azad Hind Fauj. In April of 1944, with the opening of the Japanese offensive towards Manipur, a combined Japanese and INA forces led an offensive against the British in the Battle of Imphal. After crossing the Burmese border, the INA planted the tricolor flag of India in Moirang, a small town 45 miles south of Imphal. However, further drives to capture Kohima and Imphal were unsuccessful. Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose was a fearless leader dedicated to the cause of India's independence. His passion, persistence and courage in the face of extreme personal risks and his extraordinary leadership has influenced Indians for generations. In the minds of many of his countrymen, his life, legacy, and contribution to India's freedom will remain memorable and eternal. Jai Hind. The most famous aspect of Netaji's life, that is the stuff of legends, is his Azad Hind Fauj, an army that he gathered abroad to fight against the oppressive colonial power of the British. We have with us Colonel Vikas Vohra, Veer Chakra, describing how this came about under Netaji's leadership and how difficult it would be to pull something off of this nature today, such as forming the INA. Hello, everyone. I am Colonel Vikas Vohra, retired. I have been awarded Veer Chakra by the President of India for the Kargil War. On Prakram Divas 2022, I will talk about the role of Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose and contribution of the Indian National Army towards the Indian freedom struggle. Ajat Hind Fauj was an armed force formed by the Indian nationalists and Imperial Japan in September 1942 during World War II. Interestingly, it was raised, raised on a football field in Singapore. The Fauj consisted of prisoners of war of British Indian Army captured by the Japan. 
it was an army of Indians for the Indians. Why was it formed? Its aim was to secure Indian independence from British rule with the help of outside powers. Why did Imperial Japan support it? Simply because Japanese wanted an ally in the war. Their idea was to use the Indian nationalist sentiment to fight against the British. In its first avatar, Ajad Hind force was disbanded in December 1942 due to differences between the leadership and the Japanese military. Meanwhile, back in India, Subhash Chandra Bose, a fervent patriot and a Congress president who believed India's independence could be ushered militarily, escaped from the house arrest of the Raj and reached Tokyo in 1943. In the second avatar, Bose was made the head of the Ajadin Forge and headquartered in Singapore. Bose established the provincial government of Free India and used slogan Dili Chalo to inspire the troops. A reinvigorated forge now consisted of prisoners of war, Indian expatriates, local civilians, barristers, traders, and even plantation workers, all people who had no military experience. Bose called himself the first soldier of the liberation of army. But he refused to take a rank. He loved to be addressed as Netaji. Bose, he fam famously proclaimed, give me blood and I'll give you freedom. He used the Ajat in radio to pass on the messages. The radio communicated in seven languages. The popular patriotic composition, Kadam Kadam Badaija, was was a regimental quick march of Bose's army. Forge was recognized by nine Axis states. Bose named the brigades after Gandhi, Nehru, Molana Ajad, and himself. The exact organization of Ajad in force and the precise troop strength is not known. One of the few armies to have female combat regiment called the Rani of Jhansi regiment was headed by Captain Lakshmi Sagal, and who drew a lot of civilian volunteers from Malaya and from Burma. During World War II, brave Ajad Hind Forge was severely limited by lack of weapons and supplies, fighting monsoon, disease, exhaustion, and allied air dominance. The forge fought along with the Imperial Japanese Army in the campaigns in Burma at Imphal and Kohima, and later also helped the Allies' retaking of Burma. In 1945, after Rangoon fell, Forj was ordered to withdraw alongside Japanese and eventually surrendered to pursuing Commonwealth forces. Back home, British Indian Army started to implement disciplinary action against the soldiers who had joined the Forj, while putting a trial as on a selected group of people to preserve the discipline in the armed forces. At the same time, when the news of the Forge bravery and the Red Fort trial began to begin in Delhi, it, withdrew, it, it drew wide, widespread sympathy and admiration from the Indians. Newspaper reports and execution of troops worsened the already volatile situation. Increased violent confrontations broke out between the police and the protesters and led to strikes by the British Royal Indian Army, Navy, and Air Force. So basically, momentum for the Indian freedom struggle had found its last push. To conclude, Ajad Hind Forge may not have reached Delhi, but the spirit and the patriotism of an army formed on the foreign soil, fighting for India's freedom, raised a spark in every Indian's heart. As a condition for independence, the former soldiers of the Forge were not allowed to join the Indian Armed Forces. However, after 1947, several Ajadin Forge soldiers held important appointments in independent India and were honored by the government of India. Thank you for joining us today. Jai Hind. And finally, let us hear from noted journalist Saurabh Shuklaji on the inroads that Bose made in various countries of Southeast Asia and the profound impact he has had on them 
which is notable to this day. Let us learn about the foreign relations ramifications of Netaji's sojourns. It's very important to underscore the pivotal role played by Netaji Subhash Chand Bose in India's freedom struggle. Uh, more so, he was somebody, I would say, ahead of his times. He truly followed the dictum of Vasudev Kutumakam, that's the whole world is one. In fact, if you ask me, the travel log of Netaji should underscore why uh, he was a diplomat in those times. Uh, traveling and galvanizing people and Netaji's ideas are very much relevant and also can be implemented in many ways because at a time when we are thinking of a multipolar world it's very very important to have a realist view where you have to use uh, countries of the world democracies across the globe to fulfill your national interests. I'm glad uh, in 2022 when India is regarded as one of the major global uh, power, a major global diplomatic power. It's all the more relevant that we follow uh, Netaji's vision and his dictum of thinking through and creating a more proactive uh, approach to foreign policy by uniting countries of the world. Apart from demanding Purna Swaraj, the call that Netaji used for motivating the INA is the now ubiquitous Jai Hind or Glory to India, which was later adopted by the Government of India and the Indian Armed Forces. Let us celebrate the life and contributions of a great man who continues to rouse us from slumber into doing our bit for our country. We end our humble tribute to the stalwart whose birthday on Jan 23rd we celebrate today as Parakram Devas. Thank you for joining us. Jai Hind!